Hey guys, today we're talking about ancestrus. Now, ancestrus are commonly known as bushy nose plecos. Bushy nose plecos uh, are the common name of a genus of sucker mouth catfish that we usually refer to as ancestrus. Within that, of course, there's a number of species. Uh, the family, uh, they are in the family of Luricaridae and they really are a practical catfish for most aquariums. Now, these fish originate from different South American countries like Venezuela, Brazil, uh, Colombia. They come from a number of different places and they normally uh, inhabit areas that uh, are, are fairly fast moving in terms of water flow and uh, you'll find them on structure like sunken trees, branches, there's some fast moving clear rivers that have a lot of boulders and rocks, there's some species very adept to surviving in that kind of environment. Now, one of the common misconceptions about these fish and their suction cup type mouth, we call them sucker mouth catfish, uh, is in fact that they uh, have that because of the way they feed. Now, while it does play a part in the way they feed, it has a lot more to do with the type of habitat they come from and the fact that they have to adhere to structure and maintain their their position in the current of water they live in. So it's really more uh, a factor of adhering to the structure uh, within which you find them. Now typically when you keep these fish, you're talking about keeping groups of three to four. Most species get between about three and five inches. We know that so there's a little bit of variation in that, of course. And when you're keeping them in an aquarium, and we'll allude to that again in, in, uh, in a little bit further on in the video, is the fact that they uh, you're better off keeping one male and a harem of females. So one male and two or three females is usually the best combination. 20, 30 gallon tank is really sufficient. And telling uh, males from females is really a pretty easy exercise, in fact. Males have a bushy kind of appendage on their snout, right, right near the top of their head, and females really don't. They might have a few little appendages, but not much at all. Now, these fish are really practical. In fact, they're one of the best at keeping your tank clean, keeping glass and pebbles and substrate clean are constantly scouring surfaces. It's a great addition to most aquariums. Now a few words about uh, care and breeding of ancestrus. Now these are fish that prefer wood structure in their tank and the reason we want wood structure in there is because they actually consume with some of it. If you notice the tank, any tank with ancestrus typically has extremely clean driftwood because they're constantly rasping the surface, they ingest some of it. So driftwood is really more or less an essential for them. They also like to bury into the little crevices in it and they actually spawn within larger creases and so forth within wood. So it's more or less mandatory. Rock structure is a good idea too if you're going to go with that. Smooth pebbles, they like to obviously scour off the surfaces looking for algae film and so forth. Water change schedule, a good 20 to 25 percent twice a month is always a good thing to do for ancestrus. And as I said before, water movement is key. They're, the rivers they're usually found in are pretty fast moving, so you can actually add some current to your tank simply by getting a Fluval C circulation pump. Good way, just clip one of those things in, you're going to substantially increase current to your tank, and you've got a variety of power levels to get the one that's right for your aquarium. Now, in general, these fish prefer a fine sand or a smooth, fine gravel for the bottom of the aquarium. That's important because it's a natural type of substrate that they're used to, so make sure to provide that. When it comes to keeping live plants with ancestors, you could do that, but stick to fast-growing bunch plants. You don't want to have broad-leafed uh, echinodorus species or sword plants. They're usually going to end up eating most of the leaves, and the plants aren't going to look very nice and not very long. So my experience is that that usually doesn't work out long-term. Now, when it comes to feeding your ancestors, typical sinking pellets, tablet foods are really good. Uh, you know, standard fare like that, you can sink some flakes down there, they do, they'll do okay on that. But if you really want to give them a nice treat once or twice a week, a slice of zuc fresh zucchini, cucumber, melon, you can attach that to a pebble, put that at the bottom of your tank and they're going to feed on that all day long. You can leave it in there for a full day while they, while they chow down on that. They'll really appreciate it. Now when it comes to water chemistry, when you're looking to reproduce these fish, typically you got to go soft and acidic, 5 to 6, a pH of 5 to 6, a hardness level typically of below 15 ppm. That's the type of water they come from. But for regular aquarium keeping, you know, softer to mid hardness values and a pH of uh, 6 to 7 is absolutely fine. Now if you're really focused on your ancestors, Tank mates are not really important for them. You can keep sucker mouth catfish on their own. For the real enthusiast that likes these kinds of fish, you can keep uh, maintain a tank just for them. You don't need to keep other types of fish. So that concludes our video on Ancestris. Don't forget to subscribe below, and don't forget to check us out on fluvalaquatics.com. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time.